Hello students, I hope you all are doing good. Everybody at your home, your parents, all your near and dear ones are keeping well. They're all fit and fine. Um, I know you're missing school very badly. Even we are. We are missing you children a lot. Children, uh, this is my first video appearance before you. Let me tell you that uh, I am your class teacher this year since we did not have the opportunity to have a formal introduction. Yet you know me very well. I have taught you English language the previous year. Children, uh, today's chapter is Marie Curie, A Radiant Life by Eve Curie. Before I uh, begin with the explanation, I want you to go through the details that were sent to you uh, in the presentation on Marie Curie. A lot of information uh, you will get to know if you, get, if you uh, go through the slides. I had sent you the PDF format so that it's easy for you to download. Children, so let's get started. Marie Curie, A Radiant Life is a biography written by her daughter, Eve Curie, born in 1904 and died 2007. Once she was the youngest child of the Nobel Prize winning scientist, Pierre and Marie. She gained fame as a concert pianist, writer and biographer. This account cons condensed from Eve's famous biography of her mother, Madame Curie, that appeared in the Regist Digest in 1959. Now, Marie Curie's work on radium and radiology has been one of the greatest glories of modern science. Let's read an excerpt from a biography written by her daughter, Eve Curie. So children, radium and radiology. The term radiology, in fact, was coined by Marie Curie herself, or probably I think it was radioactive, the term radioactive, which was first coined by her and first used by her. Her work on radium and radiology, radium children is an element which emits light. Okay, this light is used for laser rays, for the rays which... Uh, you know, are used for cancer patients to treat cancer patients. Hence, this was a very important discovery in the field of science, which had great uses, especially in the field of medicine. So she was. Uh, this these were one of you know the greatest glories of modern science, and these were all uh, discovered by none other than Marie Curie. Let us read the excerpt and see what details we get to know about her. In the autumn of 1819, 1891, a young Polish emigrant named Marie Sklodowska excitedly registered for the science course at the Sorbonne in Paris. Too shy to make friends, she lived a life of monastic simplicity devoted to study alone. So it was the autumn of 1891 when a young Polish emigrant, Polish are the people who belong to the country Poland. So since she was born in Poland, she was a Polish by birth and she was a Polish emigre. Emigre refers to a person who leaves one's own country, uh, especially for political disturbances, social disturbances within the country. And such a person is seen emigrating to some other country which he or she finds suitable for living. So Marie Curie decided she was named Marie Sklodowska that was her original name and she very excitedly registered because she had been a very good student she had the zeal and the enthu to continue with her education unlike you know although those times were not uh, the times when women were encouraged or inspired to uh, or given the privileges to receive education yet she was one uh, girl who belonged to a family whose parents were very supportive in this respect and therefore she could you know have the courage she could gather the courage to go against the society and to move to another country in in france she actually moved to paris uh, and she registered herself as a student of the sorbonne university i have sent you pictures of the sorbonne university as well please go through it you will like those slides too shy to make friends she lived a life of monastic simplicity when she started living a life in a new place like Paris, where people were not known to her, uh, mostly strangers all around, she usually would live a very lonely 
life not meeting too many people a monastic life would mean a very uh, a very simple and quiet life she was not a very open girl or you know who uh, was uh, who very openly met people so she usually kept her life you know confined in the place where she lived and whatever time she had she would devote it all to nothing but only studies that was you know that intense was her passion towards studies from the meager income that she earned she would pay for her room she would you know, pay for her means her clothes and whatever expenses she had to bear at the university when she wanted a feast she bought two eggs or a piece of chocolate with some fruit whenever she would want to feast herself you know she would only be satisfied or contented with two eggs a piece of chocolate and some fruit so this simple was her living so although she led a very simple life children she really you know her focus was not on you know what kind of a life she led but her focus was aimed at achieving what she really wanted to achieve in life that is she wanted to achieve she wanted to make a mark in the field of science as a woman as a scientist Mary met Pierre Curie in 1894 a French scientist of genius Pierre like her was devoting body and soul to scientific research so it was in 1894 that she met him 3 years after she had reached paris and he was also a french scientist a genius okay an expert in his own field pierre like her was devoting body and soul to scientific research he was also you know given to uh, day and night working on his scientific researches he also had his set goals for life and he wanted to achieve them by any means immediate sympathy brought them together and in a few months pierre asked marie to be his wife immediate sympathy here means you know their common interests and that she had she was you know she had emigrated from another nation she was a lonely woman there you know this uh, brought them even uh, closer and in a very in, in the next few months pierre asked marie to uh, get married to him but to marry a french man meant she had to leave her beloved oppressed poland and so 10 months passed before marie finally accepted marie did not you know uh, initially accept his proposal because uh, perhaps she wanted to get back to her country after she had finished her education her research work so marrying him would mean that she had to uh, start living with him uh, you know as a french in france and she really wanted you know she did not really want to leave her nation whom she loved that she loved so much you know pol political conditions were really not at a very uh, you know very uh, smooth and very good during during that time in poland so that was also something which was you know working at the back of her mind she was feeling bad that she would have to leave her country forever for good and so uh, she took time and then it was 10 months when she finally took the decision and she let pierre know that uh, she was ready with the proposal Their life together in a little flat was singularly lacking in comfort. They refused the furniture offered to them by Pierre's father. The bare quarters were furnished only with books, two chairs, and a white wooden table. On the table were treatises on physics, a lamp, a bunch of flowers, and that was all. So you know, she really, uh, in fact, not only she, both of them, both the Curies. they really expected less from life not in terms of luxuries they did not uh, you know worry about whether they were leading a very luxurious and comfortable life or not the quarter in which they lived it was in you know, a barely furnished you could hardly one could hardly find any furniture there any furniture there their life together in the little flat was really a very simple one lacking a lot of comfort that people usually you know um, demand or people usually you know struggle to acquire however they were not at all uh, focused on that they refused even the furniture that were offered to them by pierre's father this shows the self dignity in them you know this shows that they were not ready to take help which they thought wasn't really needed because they did not focus on the comforts so uh, the bare court quarters were furnished only with books one could only find books all around spread because they were so much devoted into reading there were two chairs and a white wooden table so there were these two chairs for both of them and there was this white wooden table on which you know which they would use uh, for a study table where they would you know place their books and they would uh, devote themselves to studying day and night on the table one could find treatises on physics treatises means you know serious case studies 
uh, written work which uh, dealt very systematically with the subject which got into details of the subject and these are really needed to be studied when one is researching so there were treatises on physics that was their main subject and they uh, you know read those try to gain knowledge from those try to learn new things and also you know try to apply those to their life and finally experiment and bring out something new in the field of science this is what they really wanted so a lamp would be there on this table and a bunch of flowers and that was all so this is the minimum you know that they required in life this shows you know they were people of very simple living but they had high aims in life not aims in terms of acquiring materialistic goods but aims in terms of you know making some important contribution to the society which would be beneficial to mankind in the long run so these were the noble noble thoughts which drove them into working so hard into struggling hard uh, in doing something good for the mankind children i hope you have understood uh, till here children please go through the uh, lines go through this uh, portion that we have done and listen to this video the explanation will be very clear to you so thank you for today uh, i don't see any more uh, uh, difficult words or uh, any expression which is uh, important to be noted to you more or less uh, the language is very simple and i hope you will understand the chapter very easily thank you very much children have a nice day uh, we shall meet again in our next class bye bye